Red Raygun is a side-scrolling action platformer in the vein of games such as Contra and Mega Man. It was released in 2013 for the Xbox 360 on Xbox Live Arcade, and it was developed by a small independent developer in Texas known as True Fun Entertainment. This was developed by two guys. The very first thing you'll notice about Rad Ray Gun is the unique graphical style. Unlike most retro games that try to go for an 8 or 16-bit classic look, this does not do that. This instead opts for looking like a Game Boy game. Obviously, concessions are made to modernize it, such as it having widescreen support. But aside from that, this does go well out of its own way to attempt to look like a Game Boy game. While I'm not entirely convinced that the original Game Boy would be capable of running a game like this without incredible slowdown, which the system admittedly was prone to on quite a few games, they did a damn good job emulating the style. If you played Game Boy games back in the 90s, this will look familiar to you. It'll probably be a huge nostalgia trip for you. But it doesn't stop there. This goes the extra mile and tries to sound like a Game Boy game. So all the bleeps and boobs that you're familiar with from playing games such as Super Mario Land 2 and Kirby's Dream Land 1 and 2 are in this game. It, that will be another massive nostalgia trip for anybody who plays this. Not only does this look like a Game Boy game, it sounds like a Game Boy game. And that makes this unique. It really makes it stand out in the indie game scene. Because I have not seen any other developer do this. Usually they try to emulate a traditional 8 or 16-bit style. They try to look like the NES, the Sega Genesis, or the Super Nintendo. One of the three. This doesn't do that. And as somebody who had a Game Boy when I was a kid, but that aesthetic is really pleasing to me. I really like the look of this game. It's fun to look at. It animates well. It gets rid of a whole lot of the uh, screen blur that you might remember from the games on the Game Boy back in the day. The sound is great as well. The music on this game, which I think is a, probably a bit more complex than something the Game Boy could have produced, even through headphones, because you may or may not know this, but you could have gotten stereo sound if you played the Game Boy through headphones, was done by Phantom NK, I think is how it's pronounced. Of course, this is his simplifying his own style just a little bit to go with the chiptune style of music that the Game Boy was traditionally used to produce. It really works to great effect here and goes a long way to make this game more fun. The music is catchy and fun. Even for someone who traditionally may not like this style of music, it's still catchy and fun. It'll probably get stuck in your head and give you a big nostalgia trip once again for all the tunes that you remember from games such as Super Mario Land 2, which did have an amazing soundtrack. But style can only get you so far. The point of a game is to be fun. And is Rad Raygun fun? I'm gonna go on a limb here and say, Hell yes, this game is fun. I enjoy this quite a bit. Even as someone who admits to being terrible at this type of game, I enjoyed my time spent with this game immensely. In Red Raygun, as you might imagine, you will be running from left to right, or sometimes right to left, depending upon how the level is laid out. You will be jumping from one platform to the next, trying to get higher up in the levels, and you will be climbing on ladders. Beyond that, you have a cannon on your arm similar to what Samus and Mega Man have. You'll use this to shoot at and destroy most of the enemies in the game, at least the ones you decide to just not jump over and completely ignore, because in traditional platformer fashion, there will be enemies like that. This game does feature an upgrade system. As you travel throughout the game, you will get upgrades to your weapon, you will get upgrades to your armor, and you will pick up other types of weapons as well, such as a grenade that you lob towards your enemy and a jetpack that lets you retire platforms. In order to collect all of these, you are going to have to do some exploring. Some of them are hidden, some of them are not in the most obvious place, and you have to figure out how to get to them. Collecting all of them will probably take you multiple playthroughs, and there are multiple branching paths through some of these levels, so there is definitely some replay value here. Apart from this just being an old-school style game where they were just inherently focused on fun over anything else, 
which they just had tons of replay value to begin with. These older style of games were the kinds of games where you were supposed to play them over and over again to master them. At the end of each level, you will run into a boss fight, and these boss fights work similar to robot masters in Mega Man. You don't necessarily need to use different weapons to be able to beat them all. The hand cannon that you start the game with should be enough, especially once you start upgrading it. But not every boss fight is incredibly straightforward. There are tricks to beating some of them. This game also seems to be a big hit with speedrunners. If you search this game on YouTube, you're bound to run across a bunch of people attempting to beat the game as fast as they possibly can. So if you happen to be a speedrunner, there is that additional little bit of replay value for you. It's not all sunshine and roses, though, because there are some problems with this game's gameplay. Every once in a while, there'll be an object in the environment that looks like you can climb on top of it, but you cannot. And you will probably spend a little bit of time figuring that out. That can be a bit of a problem. It's not a massive problem, but it's something that could have been ironed out. I think the most common complaint against this game, however, is how short it is. You can probably sit down and beat this game in under an hour. Like I said, there is replay value, but being able to beat it in under an hour will probably get to a lot of people. However, you aren't paying much for this game to begin with. It's, as I recall, it's only a couple of dollars on Xbox Live. So as far as I'm concerned, the length really isn't a problem because I do believe that you get your money's worth. Story-wise, this game is fairly simple and straightforward. You have a guy named Dr. Gunpei and his lab assistant, Dr. Yokoi, who are creating robots in a lab. Dr. Yokoi accidentally gets fused with one of the robots and becomes Rad Raygun. And Rad Raygun, his name is a play on Ronald Reagan, in case you didn't pick up on that. Speaking of Ronald Reagan, he does play a part in this because this takes place in the 80s. And there's all kinds of references to 80 games and culture and stuff like that spread throughout this game. So if you are familiar with that kind of thing, you'll probably get a kick out of that. It's also got a good little sense of humor. Despite having an overly simple story, there are numerous lines in this that'll probably get a chuckle out of you as you play through it. And that is really appreciated. I appreciate when a game doesn't take itself too seriously. And this one definitely doesn't. It knows its premise is kind of absurd and silly, and it just kind of runs with that. So you will get cutscenes at the beginning of the game, and at the end of the game, and between each of the five different levels in this game as well. The cutscenes in this game do a good job of emulating the style of cutscenes that you would have seen on a Game Boy back in the day. They're simple, they're short, they're to the point, and they're frequently kind of funny. They have a good sense of humor, as I mentioned earlier. The fact that this game is full of references to 80s culture and has a good sense of humor about it really kind of makes the story stand out more than it usually would, at least in my opinion. If you love 80s throwback side-scrollers like this, if you love the Game Boy, if you love side-scrolling action platformers such as Mega Man or Metroid or Contra, I would highly recommend giving this game a try. This game's a hell of a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. It is cheap on Xbox Live, and you're only standing to lose one whole dollar if you don't happen to wind up enjoying it. So what do you have to lose? Give Red Ray Gun a try. You might find a game that you quite enjoy like I do. Thank you everybody for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would be greatly appreciated, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks everybody, and goodbye.